Are you moving to Kansas City and not sure which neighborhood is the right fit for you? Well, you're not alone. Choosing the wrong area can lead to some serious regrets, you know, from long commutes to really not feeling at home in your own community. But don't worry, this video will guide you through all the right neighborhoods. We're gonna show you the neighborhoods to avoid, the ones that might be a good fit for you, and we're gonna make sure you find a neighborhood you truly love. But hey, before we get started, we want to do a quick disclaimer. Both are born and raised in the Kansas City area, spent our whole lives here, raised our families here, and been in real estate for over 22 years right here in Kansas City. So we're just sharing information based on our experiences. We're not trying to steer you one place or another. In fact, we haven't even met you yet, so how could we possibly steer you? So just as a disclaimer, this is just information based on our experiences here in Kansas City. So that being said, let's dig in. All right, let's go. All right, so before we dig into any specific neighborhoods, we wanna zoom way out and show you Kansas City as a whole to give you some context about the areas we're gonna be talking about. So with that being said, take it away, Zach. Show us Kansas City. All right, here's the map here. You can see Kansas City right in the middle. We've got this metro area lined in the lighter color. So Kansas City is actually in two states. So a lot of people don't know that coming in. They just assume it's Kansas City, Kansas, but there's also a Kansas City, Missouri. And that state line is depicted by, we have the river, the Missouri River that kind of runs right down into the city. And right at this point, the state line just drops right straight south. So everything on this side is KC, or is Kansas, on this side of the river. And everything on this side is Missouri. Now the river does keep going on out this way, all the way to St. Louis, but that's kind of how Kansas City set up. So you can see that, you know, there's equal sides in Kansas and Missouri. So that's why we're such a big city and it makes it fun and interesting. I will say that everything north of this river, just so you can talk the lingo when you get here, this is considered the Northland. And everything south of this river, people just say, hey, we're heading down south, whether it's Missouri or Kansas, it doesn't really matter. So at least when you're here and you're listening to people talk, you know what they're talking about. So that's kind of it. Um, we do have the airport that's up in this area right here, which is about 15 minutes into downtown Kansas City. And then our major highway system that runs east to west is I-70. That goes coast to coast. It goes right through the middle of Kansas City. We've got our uh, sports, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are hanging out right down here. And then we have another highway system called 35, I-35, which kind of dissects the city north to south. And that's kind of how you're getting around in Kansas City. We also have one other highway system I'd love to talk about. It's 435. And this is a highway that goes around the entire city. So if you want to circumvent some of that city traffic, 435 will get you anywhere in Kansas City. So with that being said, I did a good job there. Do we need to point anything? Yeah, that's the nuts and bolts of Kansas City. It's kind of like Minneapolis and St. Paul, except they're both named Kansas City. But nice and confusing. It's really fun too when you go to a, a, can a concert downtown and um, a lot of our big venues are on the Missouri side and the, uh, you know, the singer or whatever gets on stage and says, hey, welcome, glad to see you, Kansas. But they're in, you know, they're, they're actually in the wrong state so they get booed. So a lot of people have to dot their eyes and cross their T's before they get on stage, make sure they know where they're at. But anyway, it's all the same to us Kansas Cityans. Uh, we're just part of the same town, but it's called different things. In fact, a lot of areas that we refer to as Kansas City aren't even actually have a, you know, they don't have a Kansas City address. So those are Overland Park and Liberty and Parkville and some of those areas we're gonna highlight today on our video. But just because we say Kansas City, you might be in a suburb that has a different address. So it makes it nice and confusing. And uh, if that wasn't enough, there's even an area called North Kansas City, which is a little area in the Northland uh, that is a completely different town. Yeah, a little pocket right there, completely different town. So yeah, it's getting fun. When we, when we talk Kansas City, we're pretty Pretty much talking about the metro area and in generally everybody is but with that being said there's about 20 major suburbs of Kansas City all located within that and that's what we really like to talk about because that's what people are looking for so with that being said we uh, the first thing we had on our list was downtown Kansas City downtown Kansas City so as you take I-35 right into uh, across the river you come into downtown and you know I, whenever I'm thinking of downtown there's several areas within downtown that uh, are very different. On the north side of downtown, you have the River Market area up here. And on the south side of downtown, you have the Crossroads. On the west side of downtown, you have the West 
bottoms. Right in the center, you have the Kansas City, the Power and Light District, uh, where the, the T-Mobile Center is down there. So there are lots of different areas in downtown to explore. As far as housing goes, though, there's not a not a lot of single family. You're going to find yourself, if you're going to buy something that's going to be in a condo or one of the lofts downtown, you do have a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, several condominium options. With condos, it's a whole different animal um, that you need to you know, definitely reach out to us to talk about condos because there's HOA fees and you're a part of a co-op. And so a lot of it's outside of your control for special assessments and things of that nature. A lot of them are pretty old buildings that have been taken over, uh, converted into condominiums. Yeah, yeah. Each, each condo is kind of its own beast, so you yeah, definitely want to do your homework and get with a pro before you just start making offers on condos. But they're really cool. I mean, you will, they're probably some of the highest price per square foot in the city, so you're definitely going to pay more to live in a smaller space. I think that's probably with any city. But it does put you close to the action, right? Yeah, it's all about the entertainment. Um, you're, there's tons of restaurants, tons of nightlife, bars, uh, music venues, um, really a really a walkable area with an endless number of things to do. So if that's your priority, if you want to be in the action, uh, then downtown Kansas City yeah. may be the spot for you. Restaurants and all that. And something I will point out that a lot of people don't think about when they're going down there. There's more people, it's denser, you're gonna get into a little more crime, obviously. But um, your car insurance and different insurances are gonna to start to go way up when you're living downtown in the action. So I've had a couple clients move down there and they just had no idea their car insurance was gonna double. So just something to consider, something to think about. Yeah, as far as downtown goes, they are considering um, bringing the Royals into downtown. So currently the Royal Stadium is out by the Chiefs Stadium off I-70 that Zach highlighted in the beginning of the video. Uh, but they are trying to find a spot to park the Royals in downtown. And there has been a ton of revitalization. I mean, when Zach and I were growing up, you know, 30 years ago when we were um, first got our driver's licenses and stuff. Downtown was like a ghost town. There was hardly anything going on except, you know, people getting in trouble down there. And over the years, the, the local Kansas City government has done some tax abatements to really make it attractive for people to spend their money down there and not get, you know, have super high taxes. Um, and uh, there's been a ton of revitalization. So if we click on the layer view of this map, um, you can we can zoom in a little bit and give you a little more perspective than just the street view. Um, here's that river market area. It's just a great place to go. Um, there's a couple couple places highlighted on the map that are, that are fantastic. Garozzo's is an Italian restaurant um, that is really famous. And then right in this area is. Um, is the river market area. So there's a, a farmer's market every summer that where people, locals will bring their produce and knickknacks, handmade goods. Yeah, all kinds of stuff down there. The big one. Uh, there's also an open air market that's, um, you know, that's open every day down there as well. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, not even in the summer. Um, this icon right here is for the Steamboat Arabia, which if you watch our Parkville video, um, we mentioned that the steamboat was found in the mud just on the other side of the river from Parkville. So it's turned into this huge museum, a really interesting, great place to go. Another place I love down there is Harry's. It's a really cool place, old time, old timey bar. Yeah, this whole area is really walkable and restaurants and fun things that there's ice cream shops. There's even a little pier you can go out on. It's a cool little area to go hang out. Well, a lot of times I'll take uh, the family down there and we'll go get tacos or whatever, hit the little ice cream shop and then walk out on the pier. It's just a nice place to take photos at sunset. Yeah, in fact, you can park here and um, walk across the, I believe there's a tram or you can actually walk over to the Kansas City Current. Uh, there's a new stadium down here. Yeah, there's a sidewalk that takes you down. Here's the Kansas City Current. It's so new that Google Maps doesn't even have the new picture of it. Um, but the women's, I believe it's the first women's only soccer stadium. Yeah, women's soccer stadium. It's really taken off too. It's been awesome. So if you follow the news, check out the Kansas City Current. Yeah, so this whole river market area Area is really fun and then you've got the West Bottoms so the West Bottoms is just across this 12th Street Bridge and we have a couple of places we were just down here recently for the haunted houses um, there's the edge of hell and the beast I believe there's a third one catacombs maybe? 
Yeah, they, well, they used to be the catacombs, but there's some really amazing, I don't know if every city has this, but Kansas City has some phenomenal haunted houses. Um, and this is really an artsy area, a lot of antique shops or art shops, um, art studios in this uh, West Bottoms area. And then if you go down here to the crossroads, we have a video about the crossroads. You have the um, National World War I Museum and the Memorial, but it's a, up on a hill and it is uh, the, one of the best, most iconic views of downtown Kansas City. It overlooks Union Station, which is just a, a really historic train station and a phenomenal place um, where for events. That's where the, the parade, Chief's Parade or Royal's Parade will always end up at, end up at Union Station is where it'll finish off. And it's Kansas City's arts district, so there's a ton of action going on in the arts district. And as far as downtown goes, we we'll zoom in for, um, let's go into Power and Light. So just north of I-70, right in the center of downtown. This is where they wanted to put, uh, they wanted to put the Royal Stadium right in here. And current tenants of that area were not too thrilled about that idea, so it got voted down. But uh, you've got this T-Mobile Center where a lot of the basketball, NCAA tournaments, tons of uh, big time concerts, will happen in this T-Mobile Center. And then all around here are, uh, are tons of restaurants and um, bars and nightlife, hotels. We've got all the one light, two light apartment. Are those apartments or those condos? I think uh, those are condos, condos, yeah. So it's just a, if you're going out for nightlife in Kansas City, you're either gonna end up in Westport or more than likely in the Power Light District. Yeah, and they got that big outdoor stage right across the street, uh, which is kind of cool too. They'll have events and all that jazz right there. Okay. Yeah, right, right in here. Yep. Yeah, so this is covered, but inside of here, it's almost like a mall, but with bars. Yeah, so there'll be, you know, parades will, it'll be packed, but there's a big screen on the TV and then all these bars also. Not The bars face out to the street, but they also face into this little pocket. So you can be sitting up on the balconies, like at one of the piano bars or whatever. Um, having a beer looking in over watching the party in the middle and the screen and concert so just kind of a cool little spot right in the heart of it yeah nightlife is really not my uh thing nowadays in this stage of my life so that's the season of your life <laughs> yeah 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 i'm kind of in the fall season that i have us winter will be here. <laughs> yeah winter's coming winter is definitely coming for me yeah we're selling the old folks home uh one more thing i will highlight here is um downtown also encompasses there is a with, within this section of downtown that is highlighted in red, there is some single family down here. And this is called like Ho Hospital Hill uh, because Children's Mercy Hospital is down here. There is a little bit of single family in this one, one area close to Children's Mercy Hospital. And, uh, you know, if your kiddos ever have get sick, God forbid, then a lot of parents are taking them to Children's Mercy because it is one of the best places to go for kids that aren't feeling good. This uh, video is also about places to avoid. So just real quick to point out, we've got the- Yeah, that's true. We've got the east side of that, like the northeast, but it's actually called northeast. I mean, it's the northeast part of downtown. It's kind of trying to come around, but uh, in general, this area right here, and for that matter, anything kind of east of I-7 or east of 71 is not the greatest part of town. So um, anyway, you just need to know that. Well, yeah, and I would say even as you go out on uh, Independence Independence Avenue, is that street there? I guess that's more of the northeast area. Yeah, but it, really anything east of 71 when you're down south of the river is it's a little sketchy. Yeah. So just, yeah, the further you go east of 71, we'll just be careful. We'll, we'll touch on that. It kind of um, continues. It's kind of a continuing thing that we move south. Yeah. Speaking of lively and exciting areas, hey, if you're drawn to the action, then Westport might be the spot on your radar. But yeah, so Midtown uh, encompasses more than just one area. One of the most well-known areas there is called Westport. And you know, if you're going out to party, you're either going to Power and Light or you're going to Westport. And as I zoom in on the on the layer view here, the satellite view, you can see by a lot of the icons, I mean, all your bars and stuff are gonna be right down in here. Yeah, so Westport Road runs diagonally through here. 
and uh, Mill Street. So Westport Road and Mill Street are kind of one of the major intersections. But you've got uh, Char Bar is a really cool barbecue bar restaurant, beer kitchen here. Yeah, Kelly's Westport Inn. They have really kick-ass pizza at Kelly's. Over the years, it's had little bouts of crime that have kind of turned people off, and then it, you know, it's fine again. And it's just so close to all the action and such a dense community that you know it gets it can get wild down there sometimes. Yeah, and I think the opening of Power and Light had took away a lot of it. Kind of diversified the crowds. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of single family all around Westport kind of the same rule of thumb um westport's really not close to 71 like i don't know 10 or 20 blocks away but yeah uh, 71 is clear over here here's the paseo and then here's troost you can kind of see there's a little bit of a commercial you know presence on troost and really everything on the other side of troost is gets a little bit better hyde park is a historically historic neighborhood with um, homes built in the 40s, 30s and 40s that are amazing. I mean, some of them have been revitalized. Hyde Park's a really cool area. Still a little bit higher crime area than other areas of Kansas City. This is a famous, famous area of Kansas City. On this side is probably a, a little bit better, I'd say, on the west side than on the east side of Westport. And as you go down from Westport, it kind of just transitions right into the plaza. And the plaza, we can zoom in here so you can get a flavor. Uh, we've done other videos on the plaza also, but um, it's Kansas City's most premier thing. shopping and dining district. Yeah, it's got all the restaurants, all the shops, um, acres of it, lots of parking, really user friendly. Um, and then lots of uh, what's kind of cool about the plaza too, is not only the shopping and dining, but you know, just to the east, you've got kind of the, the arts area with the Nelson Atkins Museum. So um, a free museum that's pretty amazing. So while you're down there, you can you can check that out. It's got the iconic, it's the museum with the iconic, um, what do they call it, shuttlecocks. That you see, if you see images of Kansas City and they're, they're like giant, they're, the, they're bigger than a car out in the lawn. Well, yeah, you can see them from the satellite. Yeah, you can see them from space. Yeah, so here's one and here's another one. And when you're on this uh, Emanuel Cleaver Boulevard here, and you're looking at the Nelson, here's the Nelson, the museum, it's just beautiful architecture. The shuttlecocks are out on the lawn and it looks as though some giants might have been playing some badminton um, and left their shuttlecocks on the lawn. So it gives you kind of a yeah. Everything about surreal the feeling is really cool from the landscaping. There's, there's some trails with outdoor artwork. Um, there's a couple buildings and it's just, you know, well, even the uh, like the fountains and everything in the front are on the north side. It's just uh, at the lake. It's just a really cool setup. But that's right next to all that shopping. So you can go down there, have lunch in the museum. And there's parks and walking trails right along the river. It's just a really uh, swanky, beautiful area. Um, as you kind of get outside of that, there is some single family housing, especially to the west. There's an area called West Plaza, which will have some single family as well. But everything right kind of on the plaza is going to be a lot of condo living. You'll see a lot of that. Um, I'd say the, the mix of people down there, it's primarily like empty nesters. And kind of my experience, some people, you know, there might be some younger couples down there, but a lot of people around Kansas City that want to kind of be downtown, they're, once they raise their families and they want to go back down, we'll have clients that, you know, pick up a place near the plaza and um, live in a condo down there and take advantage of all those amenities. There's always something to do. Super walkable and a cool spot to be. Yeah. Either empty nesters or birds that have never laid eggs. I like that. Yeah, one of the two. Usually if you've got kids, you don't want to be start living your way out of there. Yeah. If upscale living and elegance is more your style, well, then Mission Hills might be the place to be. Just on, so here's Brush Creek, which is really cool. It has trails on either side of it, and you can ride your bike along or walk along Brush Creek. But just on the other side of Brush Creek, yeah, so just on the other side of Brush Creek, as you're going south, um, one of the mo you really hit this Ward Parkway, you come down and hit hit Ward Parkway and cruise along here. And this, I think of, when I think of Kansas City, Ward Parkway, Parkway is one of its most iconic streets. And it's divided by a park in between and it cruises down along here. And I, when I think of Mission Hills, I think it goes all the way to Ward Parkway, but apparently some of that's in Missouri and Mission Hills is a Kansas uh, subdivision or not even a subdivision, but a city. And um, it is Kansas City's richest, uh, glitziest, most expensive city in town. I mean, 
And it's old, big homes, man. It's old money. Old, old money. I mean, yeah. multi-million dollar uh, estates. And I think George, did George Brett live? Yeah, yeah. Ewan Kaufman. I mean, if you are anybody, a big wig in Kansas City, then you live in Mission Hills, usually. Yeah, so some people know uh, Travis as Taylor Swift's boyfriend, and other people know her as his girlfriend but so I'm a football fan but anyway they bought a house in Mission Hills I think it was six million bucks or something so it is amazing it's surrounded by three golf courses one is the Mission Hills Country Club then you have the Kansas City Country Club so you're really you know kind of buffered by those golf courses and then you have Indian Hills Country Club down here and if you zoom in you might just get a flavor of of the mansions that are in this place, but they are, they're 10,000 square feet. Lots of circle drives, pools, yeah. tennis courts in the backyard. Some of the communities are gated, some are, you know, you can you can pretty much drive through um, the streets, but it is just, you can get an idea by the nice one. Yeah, by looking at them that they are um, just phenomenal, phenomenal homes in here. So if you have a ton of money and you're looking to spend it in Kansas City, then it's a good place to start. We'll send you to Mission Hills. All right. So Mission Hills, what else, what else can we tell you about it? Um, yeah, you better be good at golf and have a lot of money. Yeah. I think the if when you pull it up on the MLS map, you can see like some of these places have tax bills that are like a hundred thousand dollars a year so you know i like to complain about my tax bill but uh that would be one of the drawbacks of mission hills i can't really think of many much else is that just the taxes would be yeah would be more than most people want to spend i mean a lot of these homes are there's obviously folks like this are tearing down whatever they want and building something new is no big deal but there are still a lot of older homes you know 40 50 years old so if you're buying a 10,000 square foot 50 year old home you know that's going to come with some probably some headaches down the line too so yeah maintenance and repair for sure so just all things to consider but there's a mixture of everything down there just on a grand scale yeah and just i think it's it's proximity to the plaza and being right where you want to be yeah and then we've got the uh the private school down there too it's a lot of the kids in mission hills i'm zooming in on it right now yeah so you've got pembroke which is a really prestigious uh, private school um, all the way through high school yeah and then also adjacent to mission hills is kansas city's version of central park and it is this jacob loose park it is just a phenomenal i mean it's not as big as central park but it's it'll remind you that when you are biking through or walking or driving by there are people lounged out in the park and playing frisbee with their dogs and they've got the picnic set up and uh, it's just a beautiful park and you know right in the heart of all the action so really reminds me of central park yeah you can you can walk from the atkins museum go down to the plaza for lunch and then go walk it off go walk lunch lunch off at the park it's just all kind of right there and then probably walk home to mission hills <laughs> Yeah, if you're into walking, then this Kansas City is for you. Now, if you're looking for something a bit quieter, but still close to the action, then Brookside might catch your interest. Yeah, so Brookside, some say it goes from Ward Parkway to the west, which is here, 55th Street, and it goes over to Troost, which is here, and goes clear down to Gregory Boulevard, which I believe is 63rd Street. Um, right here and we have a whole video on Brookside if you want to check it out it is just a really charming area full of older homes built in the 20s and 30s and 40s and way more affordable than Mission Hills yeah and I mean really close to Mission Hills so it's it's kind of like a gradient you know you have Mission Hills clear over on the the west side of Mission Hills up against the golf courses are the the big bad boys and then it's a gradient over into Brookside you know once you cross over Ward Parkway you're out of Mission Hills and in Brookside and there's the Brookside Boulevard um, you zoom in here they call it Brookside Boulevard, and it has a, a park, kind of a, that has a trail, a trolley trail, they call it, and it runs all along Brookside Boulevard. So you see people running and walking their dogs and taking their bikes on the, on the Brookside trolley trail. You can see it here on the map. It kind of winds in and out of alongside Brookside Boulevard. And it's just a charming neighborhood. 
with um, a lot of older homes. They're all really tightly packed together, so you don't have a bunch of yards. You might have an alley that runs between behind the houses, uh, a lot of detached garages, old stone basements, so a ton of character with mature trees, and it's just a beautiful, walkable area. There's some shops and, yeah, shops and restaurants. They do some art fairs. Here's kind of the main Brookside shopping area where you've got, you know, your coffee shops and your little, um, you know, Constantino's little price chopper you can walk to. The best pizza place is in Waldo, which is, when I think of Brookside, I also think of Waldo. They're almost synonymous to me, but people that live there are very particular about which is which. Um, but once you cross over 63rd Street, Gregory Boulevard is more like 70, 70th Street. But if, as you go south, south of Brookside, you run right into Waldo, um, which is very, very similar to Brookside. I mean, look at all this, uh, all this residential area. It was all planned by J.C. Nichols back in the day, built the plaza and master planned this whole residential area just south of the plaza. And so it's just a really charming area and super walkable. This is, both of these are super family friendly too. Yeah, they, a lot of character. I would say a, a con of Brookside and Waldo and really Kansas City, Missouri, south of the river in general is the school districts are not so great. So we've touched on this in several of our videos, go into depth on the school district, but the option is charter schools. So there are a bunch of academies and uh, charter schools. So most people that live down here, that's what they're doing. Uh, they're not sending their kids to uh, the Kansas City public schools. They, there was a period of where they lost their accreditation. Um, they've since regained it, but um, not the best school options. Unless you cross over into Kansas, and then that's a whole other story when you get over here into Prairie Village. Um, on Mission Hills, you've got uh, the Shawnee School District over here. So right here on the state line, everything we've been talking about, well, besides Mission Hills, Brookside and Waldo down here is all the Kansas City School District. So you know, if you're considering that area for the charm, you might reconsider it for the schools if that's important to you. Yep. And then the same thing with on areas to avoid a gradient as you go east towards 71 when you get close to 71 and then the east side of 71 highway, just the areas to, to avoid. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I wouldn't avoid it for going there because, you know, I'll zoom in real quick. The, uh, I would avoid it for, for, for investing in real estate. So if you go over here, um, the Kansas City Zoo is over here and uh, Swope Park. They have an awesome golf course and disc golf and then the, but yeah, so the Kansas City Zoo is phenomenal. I mean, it's really spread out where the animals kind of are set up to have a natural habitat. Um, and it's a, it's a great zoo. Uh, Starlight Theater is a great place to have to go watch a show. Outdoors, um, hence the starlight. Yep, but you know, you probably don't want to buy a house right over in here on the other side of 71s. And if you want the full suburban experience with top-notch schools and lots of amenities, well then Overland Park might be the spot for you. Uh, as you can see, southwest side of Kansas City, we've, we've kind of been hanging out here for the last few minutes and now we're bopping over and it's Kansas City's biggest suburb. You can see it's massive. Um, you've got over 200,000 people to live here. It's got the highest ratings across the board. It's kind of the best of the best of the best school districts um, and really popular. I say I would say most people come to us asking kind of about Overland Park or caught their eye. Um, so, you know, it's a hot spot. So how it's kind of set up is started in the north. You know, everything kind of started close to Kansas City city center and grew south. So in the north of Overland Park, you're going to find um, kind of the older homes where everything's kind of set up on a grid, kind of the old downtown Main Street. We can kind of flip this. Yeah, you got the down old downtown Overland Park up north. Yep north in a little downtown so you got some shops and some nice little restaurants and it's super walkable and then as you go south you know um, we just kind of go in years of construction until we get towards the bottom half of this when uh, you know there's some really big nice houses you even get out to on like estate properties on the south side I'm um, just massive properties on on acreage and Overland Park's continuing to grow south or annexing new property and um, starting new subdivisions heading down towards Stillwell so it continues to be an amazing place. Say some of the probably the top features of this are uh, is the school district. We've got the Blue Valley School District. Those services, this whole area. 
That's the top rated school in the whole state of Kansas. So this area, you know, you come south, you have the, the old downtown Overland Park. And then uh, as you drive down Metcalf, this Metcalf is pretty much the main commercial road. You come down here to uh, town center. As you cross 435, um, town center, I believe is 119th. Uh, 119th is one of the main drags through Overland Park. So you think of Metcalf, think of 435, 119th Street, and uh, you can just see all of the commercial activity going on here. They're just packed full of things to do. Big shopping centers, the best grocery stores, you know, your Trader Joe's, and all of the, the best of the best in Kansas City is in Overland Park. And in volume too, so if like the plaza's a nice little quaint shopping area that's walkable, this is like big box, big bad, five-star restaurants everywhere. Yeah, Overland Park also has a lot, uh, has some big businesses there that attract, a, so not only can you live there, but a lot of people work in Overland Park. It's kind of, you're not having to drive into downtown. They've got a lot of big corporate businesses. There's actually a place called Corporate Woods right off uh, 435. So 435 is that highway that goes all the way around the city. It runs right through the north third of Overland Park and you've got Corporate Woods. So it's like another, you know, corporate center in the middle of um, Overland Park. Um, and we have this 69 highway Way too so it's it's big enough that they were able to run another highway right down through the middle of it so it is although there's a lot of traffic there's more people it's probably more congested than any suburb it's still pretty easy to get to the highway systems get out of your neighborhood hop on the highway get where you're going but yeah you can see as you go down i-35 which is one of the main veins through kansas city then you head south on 69 highway and it services the entire overland park area uh, amazing golf courses you've got iron horse golf course here this heritage park is really nice it's just outside of overland park but outside of overland park proper yeah and speaking of parks i think at last count there's like over 75 parks in overland park so yeah a couple other noteworthy areas that we're not going to dig into the details too much in this video but are worth mentioning while we're right here next to Overland Park is adjacent to Overland Park. Coming down south, you have Shawnee. It's a whole city of the Shawnee. Then you have the whole city of Lenexa. And that goes right into Olathe, which is a massive, massive area. I mean, I think they have six high schools in Olathe. So this whole area of Kansas is is fantastic. I would say if you're considering Kansas, so you're south of this river, like Zach pointed out, you just stay away from the very tip as far north as you can go to kansas can be a little bit of you know not the best area right at the tip here but the rest of it is phenomenal and it just matters depends on your priorities so yeah if you're if your priority is more land more space you might consider coming out a little bit west um like desoto and out you know edgerton gardner getting out in this area here or spring hill on the south side of kansas uh, lewisburg is right up in here, or Stillwell, rather. Um, Stillwell, Bucyrus, these are areas where you can actually get a few acres still, but if you want to be in the action and uh, live in more of a subdivision environment than Overland Park and Olathe, is, uh, they're great areas of Kansas City, really can't be beat. Yeah, but this whole Southwest kind of corner is just really great schools, really great place to raise a family, suburbia. Yeah, you can't go wrong with there. And it's it is interesting, like the two places you want to avoid, one's like just on the west side, or up here, just on the west side. Yep. And just on the east side. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, and not avoid completely. We go there. Uh, yeah, just you wouldn't want to invest. It's not, yeah, or potentially raise your family if you're relocating here. Yeah, I'm be my first spot. No, but if to go there for lunch, there's some, oh, yeah. there's some amazing places. Uh like Slaps Barbecue is on the in Kansas on the east side there or the west side rather. There's some really good Mexican restaurants. El Pollo Rey yeah. is phenomenal. You can go there. Just Kansas City really do, doesn't have any areas that you have to completely avoid. Maybe a couple uh, if you really dig into the details. But it, by by large, it's really safe Kansas City on the whole. If you're seeking a family friendly place to be with lots of amenities and a little bit of a quieter feel, well then you should consider Lee Summit. Well, as far as Lee Summit it goes i th what i think of it is the lakes yeah lee summit is chock full of lakes here's kansas city metro area we're just here on the southeast side 
on the Missouri side. And then at the north end, like here's I-70, we're gonna have the uh, stadiums up here, baseball and football. And just down the road to our first lake, we've got Lakewood. This is a uh, planned community development, super awesome. They've, man, if you're looking for lakes, this is a great spot. They've got golf, they've got restaurants, they've got volleyball courts, tennis courts, they've got the lake, the community dock. Newer construction, bigger homes. It's a great spot, close to great highway access. You've got Blue Springs Lake and Lake Tacoma on the east, which are public lakes that you can't necessarily live right on them, but um, have access to. You can have a boat there, you can rent boats. I you can put big boats on there, right? Big boats on here. Lake Tacoma is kind of known as a sailing lake, so you tend to see more sailboats, and I think they have a lower horsepower. And then Blue Springs, you can kind of just let a riff out there and go skiing. Um, and then if, as we go south, we've got Longview Lake, another uh, big lake. They have a marina, you can't necessarily live on it but it's open to the public too, and a big wakeboarding, uh, wake surfing, all that kind of stuff. And then Winnebago, Winnebago down here, which is another one of those lakes. This one you can live on, have a dock in your backyard, and all that good stuff. So nice big houses. So lots of lake options. And then even Lake Lottawana, when I think of Lee Summit, I kind of throw Lake Lottawana in there. This is a really cool, unique place where you can have big boats, you can live right on the water. I believe you can have covered docks here. We have private docks, private docks um, with, with lifts, tower, all, you know, all the cool stuff. They have a ski club. They have a uh, little restaurant here. You can hit this from the public, but it's right on the water. It's been there forever. A super cool place for like a date night, something unique and kind of romantic right there on the water. Or if you live there, you can show up on your boat. Mm -hmm. Cool spot there. Um, Lee Summit has lots of lots of newer developments. So it's been around for a long time, but it's continuing to grow. They have a huge conservation area if you like to hunt, kind of out to the east. They also have a really charming downtown. Yeah. Yeah, they do. It's super walkable, lots of old brick buildings. Uh, Third Street Social is down there. We've got a couple more in the city now here recently, but uh, that was the first one that I know of in Kansas City. And pretty easy to get through too. You got 291 that kind of runs um, north and south, and then uh, 470 highway cuts through as well. If you prefer to be closer to the airport and be in an area with great schools, then maybe you should consider the Northland. The Northland, like we said, that we've got this Missouri River that kind of dissects the city from north to south and that goes all the way across right and then we have the uh, kansas missouri line that goes down so everything in the northland is missouri so that makes it nice and easy this is all all this right here that we're about to talk about is called the northland and it's all missouri and it's split into two counties you've got clay county on the east and platte county on the west but i think the line is almost right at that 169 highway and if you take 169 Highway clear north, you go to an amazing lake, since we were kind of on the topic of lakes, is Smithville Lake, which is a huge reservoir, a Corps of Engineers reservoir um, that is phenomenal. Yeah, it's a good spot. But what's cool about the Northland, we actually happen to live in the Northland, so we know quite a bit about it. But we've got the airport up here, so i just like to touch on that. Um, Max and I both like to travel, and if you're into travel, then... Uh, and to south of Platte City there. It's right in here is the uh, International Airport. It's a newer airport too. We just got this built a year, year and a half ago. So we're continuing to get new flights. We're right in the Midwest, right? Right in the middle of the country. So we do have a lot of flights. They're short, like to almost anywhere in the country. East Coast, West Coast, South Coast, Canada. I mean, it's pretty easy to get around in all your flights. So it does make it really convenient. And living in the Northland, there are, so kind of said this, this whole area right here, anything north of this is the Northland. There's some major suburbs, which we have uh, Liberty, and these are gonna be kind of your, your top rated um, school districts as well. We've got the Parkville area, we've got Gladstone, uh, North Kansas City down here, and then we've got kind of the Staley, Staley district up here, and then uh, Platte City or the Platte County area right here. So that's kind of your major suburbs of the Northland, and that is important because by not having the Kansas City, you know, there's going to be like right here is going to be like Kansas City address, you know, whatever. There's going to be lots of Kansas City addresses. By living in one of these suburbs, you're going to be able to knock out the 1% Kansas City earnings tax. That, and you work on the Missouri side, you could be subject to. So that kind of helps uh, take you out of that zone. And um, just a nice place. All these areas like Liberty's, kind of that A-plus school district. Parkville's got the A-plus schools with uh, Park Hill School District. Um Gladstone's really highly rated with the North Kansas City School District. And then uh, 
Platte County too has really great schools. So you almost can't go wrong with the Northland for schools. What I would say about that is it's it was uh you know it was slower to develop for whatever reason, and you've just got a little more elbow room up here. There's a little less traffic. Um, you can find anything from starter home subdivisions all the way up to, you know, $6 million on the golf course. You know, sky's the limit kind of stuff. So several smaller lake communities that you can live in. You know, when I say smaller, I don't know, four or 500, 600 houses. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of why I've chosen to live in the Northland is just the character of it is a little bit more easygoing, um, a little less traffic and a little more, like you say, elbow room, big, bigger lot. It is a little, I mean, the only negative I would say is it's, it's a little more sprawling. So with exception of a few subdivisions and neighborhoods have really, you know, come to light in the more recent years. There, It's just, you know, it's kind of spread out. Not all of it really had a rhyme or a reason. It's all kind of getting filled in now and uh, makes a little more sense. But yeah, it kind of has that feel. Yeah, that is true. So Liberty was its own little city and it wasn't, it was disconnected. And since, uh, since then it has all filled in so a lot of this you know here's liberty but all of this area around liberty is filled in so when you're driving through it it seems like in one place but the result of that is traffic can get a little bit congested on because these these highways were never really built to handle the amount of people that live here now so that, I guess that could be a negative. One area I'd like to point out too, while we're talking about Liberty that you hadn't mentioned is Kearney is just up 35 highway. And it's almost becoming to where the sprawl is including Kearney also, you know, so you got Kearney and Smithville and Platte City are all clear up on the north side, but they're, they're becoming part of the Kansas City Metro. Yeah, you can even see with like the, uh, you know, with the white line around the city, that's the denser population yet. Yeah, it's it's almost connecting like Liberty and Kansas City and grown together right here. So Ooh. yeah, it's definitely in that direction. But people that live in the Northland swear by it and love it for a lot of the reasons we just mentioned. And, you know, people that live down south swear by it and love it for a lot of the reasons we've mentioned as well. So you really, with a lot of these major suburbs of Kansas City, can't go wrong. They just all have a little bit of different vibe, a few little amenities, and it's whether being like close to the airport, you want to be close down to the big lake of the Ozarks, do you want to be over on the Kansas side with the great Blue Valley School District and, um, and a lot more denser population. Um, you just got a little bit of everything here in Kansas City. There's so much nuance to Kansas City, it's really hard to fit everything into one video. So why don't you reach out to us, we'll listen to what your situation is, and we can come up with a customized plan specific to you and your needs, and we can make sure that your move to Kansas City is a successful one. Right. We've been helping people move to Kansas City just like you for over 20 years now, we absolutely love it. So we look forward to chatting with you, and we'll see you on the next one.